Hey there everyone, welcome back. This is another comparison video. I am doing Emily Hughes International Soccer on the ZX Spectrum, Commodore 64, Amstrad CPC and Commodore Amiga. Um, I've played the Commodore 64 version to death, never played the Spectrum version, never played the Amstrad version um, and I played the Amiga version as well. So should be an interesting video, hopefully, for you guys. Um, and let's crack on with it. Okay, the first thing that you have to do in any Emlyn Hughes game, as far as I'm aware, is edit the team. Because it's usually set up computer versus computer. There we go. One letter will do. Don't have to be too fussy. Uh, not when you're doing a quick video, anyway. Okay. Um, straight into play match. You'll find this; these screens are pretty um, universal throughout all the versions. Oh, wow. Uh, this is a lot different to what I'm used to, to be fair. You'll see when we play the Commodore 64 version how this version varies. Um, yeah, this doesn't have any of the colour for a start. You get a crowd along the top there, which is not here. The score is on the bottom of the screen, usually. We'll see how it plays. It's playing pretty much... The same speed that the Commodore 64 version would play, as far as I'm aware. Oof, not a bad effort. I'm set up to play eight minute half, uh, eight minute matches. Sorry. So what I'm going to do is play a half. So I wanted to play sort of three or four minutes. I figured four is a good time to play for. So we'll just play the first half of, of every game. I'll set it up the same way. Um, the th if you've never played Emin Hughes before, you can kick in multiple directions, even back heels, um, depending on where you sort of like move the stick. You have to get used to that. That that does take a while, actually, when you're a new player to get used to the directions and stuff. But um, you can kick it multiple heights and multiple directions. It's really cool. And that's what set it apart, really, um, back in the day. Um, you know, really as one of the, the best football games of its time. Just if you do a bog standard push forward and kick, it goes along the ground. Oh, there we go. Let's get a shot on time. Oh, well, <laughs> poor goalkeeping that was. Always worth a punt. Yes, you can also slide tackle um, by just pressing. I mean, it's all done, obviously, as, as everything was back in the day with one button. So one button does everything. You can jump to head the ball when the ball's in the air. Slide tackle when the opposition has it. Um, you can obviously, you can move in every direction. So you can literally spin around in the circles, which is cool. When you've got the ball, sometimes that's a good move to get past players like this. A little chip through. The only thing it's missing really, well, one one of the things I would say is a radar because you don't always know where your players are. Um, obviously, more modern footballs did go with the radar system. Ah, oh, damn it! Thought I'd kicked it past him then. Yeah, so that that's it. It is a bit annoying. You know, you do sometimes punt the ball forwards and there's not a player there or whatever. But you know, we're talking very early football games here. It's you know, they're not always going to have the features that modern games do. Oh, that was a good, fairly good pass, if I can get there. It doesn't have a sprint feature either, so you can't, like, you know, sprint. Like I say, it's very limited, obviously, by one button, so you're not going to have all the features that modern football have. Oh, poor effort. I was going for the far corner, actually. I messed it up. So even I can mess up on the, that, and I've played uh, the Emily Hughes games a lot, but sometimes you do forget the directional controls, even when you've played it a lot. You dare score. Oh, goalkeeper. There you go, you can kick it on a diagonal. That's not a bad pass, actually. Oh, I thought it was going to go straight to my player. But throw-ins are done. Yeah, Obviously, whoever's highlighted um, will get the ball thrown to them. Obviously not on this occasion because it's the computer's throwing. Oh, ah, damn, didn't mean to kick it straight. Oh, hit the post. <laughs> that wasn't a bad effort in the end. I didn't mean to kick it straight, actually. I think, again, like with a lot of these comparison videos, you're going to notice more of the um, differences in terms of the colours, particularly on like the older systems. That's That was apparently a goal. How was that a goal? Oh, we don't get action replays either, so that's another thing that from the modern games you don't get. 
I'm sure I just got ripped off there. <laughs> that did not look like a goal to me. Okay, fair enough. We don't have VAR. We're not in those days. Uh, it's going to end now, so four minutes are up. Overall, I'm pretty impressed, actually. Um, it plays yeah, very faithfully to the Commodore 64 version, which is the one I'm used to more than anything. Um, you know, we're talking... Actually, let's just... Yeah, let's press the escape key. Actually, the escape pauses it. Yeah, there we go. Uh, yeah, um, obviously, you're not going to get the colours on the ZX Spectrum version, which is a bit of a disappointment. It's a shame they couldn't put a little bit of colour in, but... Obviously, you know, you are restricted when it comes to the specy versions of games. Um, not always in a bad way. Sometimes, it, you know, I think in the last video, Head Over Heels, I said I actually prefer the Spectrum version because of less colours. Um, sometimes it helps in games. Football games, yeah, maybe you need the colours because it, it does make it easier to spot the players you're controlling. But anyway, we will now jump to the Commodore 64 version. So I will see you momentarily once it's loaded. So oh, welcome back. This is the Commodore 64 version. Um, as I said, you get used to this screen um, in all these games. The menus are up there, look, hidden underneath the banner. Um, we have music this time, which is a difference. Um, I've got to set the game up, so let me do that. Let's take it down to eight. I've got five kick directions. Um, I would turn the music off if I could, but I don't think it's going to be an option so okay so once again you have to edit the team don't forget to do that before you do anything because if you don't if you don't then you'll be playing you'll be having computer versus computer you can easily quit so it's not a problem now this game does have a tendency to crash quite a lot which is a bit annoying so um let's just get that set up let's hope i get through this okay <laughs> If it does crash, you can just press escape, come back to the menu and restart. So it's not terribly inconvenient. Here we go. Wow. Already, look at the difference. Like I said, you've got the, the crowd up the top. Adds a little bit of atmosphere. Sound effects wise, you've got a few more sound effects. Even a ball kicking um, sort of sound effect as well. Uh, the scores on the bottom, which is a lot more... I think it's a lot more symmetrical, isn't it, looking than the Spectrum version. And it will play slightly... If you see, slight, the same, but slightly quicker. Um, yeah, so... Uh, obviously, the team colours are a huge plus um, on this version. And anyone who's familiar with the... Um, the classic Commodore 64 game, International Soccer... Like, not Emily Hughes International Soccer, just International Soccer. It was a cartridge game. Um, yeah, the same uh, character sprites in that game as there are in this. Oh, nearly. Did not mean to kick that there. Yeah, so, yeah, if, you're f if you are familiar with that, and there we go, straight away. There's an example. That has crashed. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so I come straight out, go back in, and start again. I may include this in the video, actually. Normally I would edit it out, but um, just to show you that it does have a tendency to crash. Oh, so frustrating. <laughs> the amount of times this used to happen um, when I was a kid playing this game. I mean, I love this game to death. And that is where modern games do have an advantage over retro because obviously you can now get patches for things like this which cure it. Back in the day, you know, you didn't have any of that luxury. So, you know, if a game crashed, it crashed. Um, sadly, this one has a tendency to... I think there was a lot of times when I was a kid um, when the ball went out for a throw-in I used to get really nervous because the throw-in bugs were, were quite often. There you go, it's happening now. So, so it's not happening now, so that's a good sign. Basically what would happen, like you saw on that one, is that no one would come across to... Oh, free kick there. No one would come across to take the throw-in and you'd just stand there until the half ran out, basically. <laughs> Very annoying. that one forwards nice football as well on this one it's about the little things isn't it the, on the international soccer cartridge that I'm comparing the graphics to the, the football used to be like a big cross <laughs> it wasn't so much a ball you know but this one yeah, they made it very nice the ball which is quite important it is football after all you know 
you don't really want to be kicking a big cross around. It looked like a flat football <laughs> on international soccer. <laughs> Although I'm not going to diss that game too much because it was, you know, at the time it was an absolute revolution. It was a funny game where you could run the length of the field, um, sort of balancing the ball on your head. It was, <laughs> it was quite funny. Okay, so it seems to be playing better now. That's good. Like, you know, crash free. You'll get one or two crashes now and again. It doesn't crash all the time. Oh, that was a poor effort. But, um, yeah, it's just one of them things you have to live with for this game, unfortunately. You get the groovy sound effects with the the horn. I think that's what they call it. I don't even know, to be honest, but... Oh. So far, so boring. No goals so far. Come on. I need to make an effort. Oh, that was well control. It's one of the things you could do. If you timed it right, you could run and jump and intercept the goal kicks. I'd got it all wrong then. But... Oops. <laughs> Just hacked him down. I don't think, if I remember correctly, that there was yellow cards in this game, as far as I'm aware. So I think I think you'll see that obviously the the difference between this and the specy version is is kind of night and day really, isn't it? You know, in terms of graphics. I mean, that doesn't always it's not always the most important thing. So I'm not dissing the Spectrum version at all. They they work with their limitate within their limitations and um, still made a very good football game. But um, sound effects wise. And graphics wise, this is this is streets ahead, isn't it really? So this is the version I used to play all the time when I was a child. I did graduate eventually to the Amiga version. Um but it's just the one I always used to come back to. I mean, even when I got back into retro gaming and stuff, um, if ever I was gonna play like a version of Emily Hughes, it would always be the Commodore 64 version I would choose. Be a bit annoying if we don't get a goal, but I don't think we're going to get one somehow. We've got really got enough time. Ah. No, definitely not going to get a goal now. Ah, oh, that's a shame. <laughs> Damn, I was hoping to ping one just just on the final whistle. So there we go. So there's the Commodore 64 version. Um, definitely a step up from the Specky version. Um, you'll have to agree on that one. I'm pretty sure. Even the most diehard Spectrum fans, and I'm talking to you, David, plays retro games badly. <laughs> I'm talking to you because I know you are a Specky fan, and you'll probably even say in the comments that um that you're gonna prefer the Spectrum version because that's just you love the Spectrum. <laughs> but you know, for me. I love a Spectrum too, but you can't you can't say the Spectrum version is better than the Commodore 64 version in my opinion, but there you go. Each to their own, that's what I say. Okay, now we're going to be playing a version I've never played before, and that is the Amstrad version. So I'll see you in two seconds once I've loaded that one up. And so here we are, back on this screen again. <laughs> back on this screen on the Amstrad version. Um, okay, I have to just do what I do, set the game up for eight minutes. Um, have kick directions five that's good because you can you can just play with three or with one um, kick direction just depending on how difficult you find the game if you just want to kick it straight ahead you could just play with one kick direction but uh, where's the fun in that eh um, okay got to do the usual thing again as well just edit the team so you can see all these screens pretty much the same on all versions um, no need to change it really is there I suppose uh, these dots here that represent the player's skills and stuff. Um, you can edit all of that. So if I wanted to just make Anderson better, I'll give him another dot there. That's the dots coloured in. Basically means you know the bet the better they are. So if you really wanted to cheat, I'm well, not challenging. It's cheating so much. You know what I mean. But okay, that's set. So we are ready to play. I'm quite excited to see what this looks like actually because I've never played it on the. Amstrad. I never had an Amstrad growing up, so um, I'm just discovering it now and later in my life. Here we go. Wow. <laughs> now, 
And that's a tiny little screen, isn't it? <laughs> that is tiny. We've got some colour going on, which is cool. I'm not sure Holland have ever played in that colour before, but... One thing I am noticing them running out at the moment, it seems to be a lot slower. I don't know if the game's going to play that slow. We'll find out. Oh yeah, wow. Yeah, that plays a lot slower, doesn't it? Oh, still got the kick direction, so that's cool. Sound effects there. Oh, I've got a free kick. I don't think I've had a free kick so far in any of the versions. Oh, that didn't go so well. Ugh, too close to the keeper. Wow, this is this is a lot slower. Yeah, I don't, I don't mind the small screen as such, but it would be better with bigger, bigger characters. I'm not quite sure why that is in such a small screen. I don't know if, you, if don't know if it's my setup or whether that is just the way it is. Wow, I don't know, that's a good effort. Ooh. I mean, it still plays the same. It's just it's it's playing a little bit slower, to be honest with you. Everything is running the same. Same for you know you we got a slide tackle, kick the ball in all the directions as long as you obviously set it that way. And good effort. Ooh. I don't always mind a slower game. Sometimes it's nice to play a, a, a football game at a slower pace because you can kind of you know play a little bit more tactical and sometimes I don't like it when it, a football game's too hectic I mean I love sensible soccer and kickoff don't get me wrong but probably two of the fastest football games out there but um, sometimes you know you you don't get a lot of time to think when you're playing them Ooh. get in back to scoring I actually meant to put that in the corner so <laughs> it wasn't the best effort I've ever done in my life but we have a goal. That's good because the ball draw nil nil last game. So yeah, I'm I'm not finding this too bad. Probably going to rank this worst of all. You know, so far anyway. I mean, I haven't played the Amiga version. I'm assuming that the Amiga version is not going to be this slow. But it doesn't mean it's a bad game, to be honest. I'm quite enjoying the slower pace of one for a change <laughs> to be so hectic but yeah it's quite a surprise I, I am a surprise I didn't I didn't think they would drop the speed this much but again maybe it's maybe it's my setup I don't know maybe leave me a comment and let me know if you've played if this was your version of choice um, if you think that he's playing at the right speed I don't know it seems seems incredibly slow to me but then you know sometimes like I said different versions are different aren't they for that very reason good ball forwards you can dribble in this one look. <laughs> ah damn it Just passed it to him in the end little chip ooh so close yeah it's not bad not bad the pace to be honest with you for a change I think I do prefer, like I said, the, the quicker versions. Graphically, it's quite nice, though, this one, isn't it? You know, the football sprites are pretty good. Um, colours are okay. You know, it's quite easy to distinguish what team you're on. So I don't have any issues with that. Like I said, I don't really have an issue with the speed. It's, it's just a bit different to what I'm used to. Oh, so close. I don't know where the keeper was going there. So yeah, overall impressions. I'm I'm not disappointed in any version so far. You know, sometimes you you get used to playing things on what was considered. Oh, that was a bit <laughs> that was a bit out of tune, wasn't it? Uh, I can't, it sounds unfair to say these things were considered inferior, but I I guess Commodore 64 was the most powerful out of these three computers that we've played it on so far, and obviously the Amiga is going to be even more powerful when we play it on next. So. You would expect those versions to be better, but playability-wise, um, all all three versions I've played so far have been been excellent. Now we are going to move on to the Amiga. So see you in a second. So here we are on the Commodore Amiga version on the now very familiar menu. Um, I've already set the duration up. If 
funky music on this version. Um, I've already edited as well, I believe. Hang on. Why has it got Holland up there as the team? Hmm, don't know what's going on there. I did edit England, so I'm hoping. <laughs> Actually, that's the point, yeah. Okay, let's make sure. England. There we go. Yeah, so you can you can see they're played by Lomputer, as always. So we should be ready to go. Bit of fade out on the music. Here we go. Wow. There you go. There's the differences. <laughs> There's the differences with a, with a more powerful computer. I like the setup down the bottom with the flags and the scoreboard. That's pretty cool. I like the design of the scoreboard down there as well. And the crowd's obviously very cool. And you get you get more sound effects, I think, on this version. Oh, fouled immediately. Same game though. We're looking we're looking at the same game still. Wow, look at this uh, listen oh listen. I'll just spit that out, All right. Listen to the sound effects. You don't look at the sound effects, do you? Yeah, it's um it's pretty awesome atmosphere, isn't it? It's a lot different to uh, any other version. Commodore 64 has got a few sound effects, but not like this. Oh, missed the ball. I want to score on this version because I want to see how good the, the crowd cheering is. Go away. That's probably going wide, actually. Oof, still got the keeper interested though. Yeah, I'll be a bit disappointed if I don't score in this version. Just, like I said, to test out how the, the crowd sound effects are compared to the other versions. I mean, you'd expect them to be good, considering they already are. Don't want them scoring though. Still personal pride. <laughs> it's a personal pride thing. I'm pretty sure they're chanting, come on you reds there, right? which obviously is not really... Not really appropriate here. Passing it about. That doesn't usually happen for me. Ah. Oh. Ah, oh, if I could have got hold of that one, the keeper was on the ground. I love it now, though. Thank you. Nope. The one thing I remember about this game is it's always very hard. Once you've got a player after you, he like, sticks to you like glue. There might be a chance here. Bounce, yes. Ah, oh, oh, oh. heck of a save. <laughs> heck of a save. That's not good. Oh, I was hoping it was going to get through there. Get off me. Okay, that's wide. Oh, or over as well. Now I can see I'm not going to score, am I? I can see it coming. A minute and a half left to score a goal. Come on! I think we can we can all agree on something that this is definitely the best looking version of the game. Um, it's not really close, is it? Let's be honest. So I didn't play this one as much as the Commodore 64 version growing up, but I think it's because you know Kickoff and Sensible Soccer were available on the Amiga, so this wasn't you know wasn't as highly thought of in them days as those games you know Emily Hughes had come and gone um, on the Commodore 64 and on that computer it was the definitive football game at the time you know <coughs> Micropro Soccer came out and obviously uh, was well regarded too but you know I think a lot of people thought this was the best football game on the Commodore 64 I'm guessing it's not the case on the Amiga. You know, most people think sensible, sensible soccer when they think Amiga, don't they? Or kickoff, or both. You know, in my case, I liked both. Let's see if we can get a goal before we finish. Nope. I was rather planning on him not intercepting that. Don't think I've got enough time to score now. Give it a damn good go, but. Yeah, five seconds. It's not going to happen. Ah, oh, darn it. <laughs> so annoying. 
I feel like I want to play on longer, but that would be against the spirit of the video. So there you go. There's all four versions of Emin Hughes International Soccer. Um, please, as always, let me know in the comments what you think um, the best version is, what you played growing up. Me, it was Commodore 64 version I played a lot growing up. Still, obviously, have a huge soft spot for that one. I think, though, if I was to play it nowadays, I would probably go for the Amiga version because of the sound effects and everything and the playability. I mean, it was very good. Um, and... Like I said, the C64 version does have a tendency to crash. So you would expect they would have el eliminated that in the Commodore Amiga version. And I didn't see any evidence of crash in there. So colors are nice. I think if I had to give an overall verdict, I would probably say the Amiga version looked looked the best now. Um, but for nostalgia-wise, for me, the Commodore 64 version. Nothing wrong with the Spe Spectrum and Amstrad versions. Um, Amstrad version way slower than any of the others but again like I said I don't know if it's my setup if anybody can let me know um, in the comments if they played that a lot I'd be um, happy to listen to the comments on that one and obviously if you've got any suggestions for future comparisons videos don't forget to leave a comment and uh, if, if you'd like the video please do leave a like and obviously if you're new to the channel don't forget to hit the subscribe button and that would be fantastic uh, just before we go as well I'll just do what I did on the last comparison video. Um, screenshots of the uh, loading screens will be going up now uh, for you to compare. Uh, there we go. Um, and also, I will put up maybe uh, screenshots of the artwork, although I may include that in the thumbnail, so um, I may not put it up again here, but uh, we'll see. We'll see if this bit makes it to the edit of the video. <laughs> uh, don't forget you can follow me on more social media platforms. Um, I'm on Twitter. I'm on Instagram. Uh, I'll bung the addresses up on the screen for you now. Um, and yeah, if, if you want any uh, particular games played on this or any, any of the other series or any modern games that you want to see me play, uh, leave a suggestion in the comments and I'll be only too happy to oblige. Okay, guys, thank you so much for watching. Take care and I will see you on the next one, whatever that may be. Bye for now.